For weeks now, we have seen and enjoyed the show. Different perspective from different student leaders of different universities. This week, we bring you George Lewis Karuki, a former student leader at Mount Kenya University, the year 2015-2016, who was in charge of health and accommodation. Well known as Kunguni. He has led from high school to university level and now aspires to be more into leadership. Let's find out more from him as you enjoy the show. Welcome to our show this week. Karibu sana, George Lewis Karibu. Thank you. I hope you've been good. Yes, I'm fine. Long time. Yeah, no see. <laughs> so, uh, say hi to our audience and tell them who is George Lewis Karuki or Kunguni if I may say. Yes, thank you. Uh, as again, I'm saying, uh, it has been said, I'm George Lewis Karaoke, uh, famously known as, uh, known as Kunguni. I'm a young man from Muranga County, Kandara Sub-County, Ngarari Award. And uh, I'm happy for hosting me here. I'm humbled. I'm humbled? Yes. Thank you so much, Karibu Sama. We'll get to know more about you as we progress. But uh, now, we we'll wish to understand and let our audience understand your, um, let's start with your academic journey and where it, had led, it has led you. Yes. Yes. Uh, I started my uh, primary school education at a school called St. Martin's Boys in Moranga County. Then I studied to a high school, uh, I proceeded to a secondary school. That is a narrow secondary school. Then, I scored well in my Form 4 grade and I joined Mount Kenya University to pursue Bachelor's of Education Arts and um, I completed my studies at, uh, in the year 2016 and now I'm a fully TSC registered teacher. Teacher, are you teaching somewhere or what happened down the line? You make us understand if uh, your journey in academics has led you to exposing your your knowledge to other people out there? Uh, after I graduated in the year 2016, uh, I tried my best to, for interviews so as I can be employed by the TSC. But as we understand, this country, about the unemployment issue, more so in the education sector, in the education se sector, I can tell you, there is a backlog of unemployed teachers. So when I was graduating in the year 2016, and I was going for my interview the following year, I would find it that there are other people who will come to do the interview and uh, they completed their studies in the year 2011. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, there is a policy in the TSC that first, uh, uh, they have to employ those who... Came first? Came first? Yes. Yes. So, in my year 2017, I found it, uh, I, I found it very hard for me to, to get employed because the others, there was a very huge backlog of unemployed teachers. 2018, the same. So, and I decided that uh, I have to use my skills and the education I've gained to do something else. Mm -hmm. And from there is when I decided, uh, because I have to wait for some years, so it's my year of completion. And at least they can reach uh, the, the TSC can reach a year where they can employ the, the, um, they can employ those who have completed their studies mm -hmm. in the year 2016. I decided to join business, mm -hmm. whereas also I had passion for business. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, the business is doing well. As I await maybe for a chance, which to join the to, TSC because that's what I studied, and I had passion in teaching. So what was um, your combination in the field of education? What did you study exactly? Yes, I studied, uh, I, my combination was, uh, it's, uh, an, I'm in the art section, mm -hmm. and I'm in history CRE. History CRE, and uh, that's it. <laughs> so before we go further, mm -hmm. um, just a few, is it weeks or months ago, I saw your clips on NTV, congratulating you on making a bold step as the first, I think the first person to have a wedding during this pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. What made you, what pushed you to not to wait like others to have a wedding at that time? 
maybe you can make as understand that maybe somebody else out there is waiting for the pandemic to end to have a wedding to know what they can do right now yeah thank you for that question yes um, i was among the first few kenyans who did the wedding uh, during this uh, corona uh, pandemic uh, period mm -hmm. and uh, one what made me to have my wedding at that particular period is I had all the requirements. I had met all the requirements for one to have a religious uh, wedding. Mm -hmm. Where else I had gone to the Attorney General's office, I had submitted all my details, and we had been given the certificate, which now gives the reverend of where we go to, to, to preside over our wedding. So even with the pandemic, we saw no reason to wait for further, because the only thing which was is the people now to come and we congregate together and we celebrate our uh, as we celebrate as we take the vows. Mm. But now we were lucky that uh, we also followed the MOH guidelines that uh, we were told the wedding must not exceed nine people. And so we decided we shall follow those guidelines. Mm. And uh, we, we were nine of us and the wedding happens. And now I'm a happily married man. It's four months now since my <laughs> wedding. And I'm so happy about it. Why did you wait for the pandemic to end? Uh, this pandemic, uh, this corona yes. thing, it is here with us to stay. We've seen it. It started in China mm -hmm. in December, that's when maybe it was discovered. Here in Kenya, when it arrived, it arrived in, uh, I understand, around March. 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 So, uh, when we were seeing about the, the, the way it is spreading, we saw that the curve will not flatten for us to wait for it to, to, to end. And again, it, it's an, as it is said, it is an infectious disease. So it is spreading so fast. So the chances of it um, ending were not high. Secondly, as I've told you, in the attorney's general's office, you're given a certificate which has a deadline of when the wedding should take place. It should have to take, taken place. Mm -hmm. And when that wedding, when that day, uh, that, uh, day deadline day reaches, you reapply again. Mm -hmm. So we saw no need. We saw no need. And we never knew when this uh, disease will end. Mm -hmm. So we decided, because we met all the requirements, let's just have our wedding, the nine of us, me and my fiancé, the reverend, and the two parents from both sides. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would recommend... Uh, I would, have, uh, I would recommend that weddings, as we are going, we go the, uh, the, the, the American way, that let's not have a multitude of, uh, let's not have a multitude of people uh, attending the wedding. Mm. I think 15, 20 people are good to go. They are good to go. Okay. Even now, even, uh, also we've started adopting of having funerals of 15, <laughs> 15 people. Which, is, which has been a very great challenge to us as Africans. Which is, yes. Okay. Now, let us go back now into your leadership journey. How you ended up being a health and accommodation minister at Mount Kenya University. Maybe you've been a leader before. Give us your leadership journey and where you are right now. Uh, my, I can say my leadership journey started back in high school. Uh, that is a narrow high school. I was the then uh, games captain. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 also the, 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 uh, the leadership of the school gave the, uh, the students of the secondary school, it gave the students the rights to choose their own leaders, the head boy. So uh, I decided to be the games captain. Mm -hmm. And the option relied on the students to decide who they want to be their leader. And I decided because I'm good in sports, I think I can lead the docket of uh, the, the games docket at the university, uh, at the uh, secondary school. Mm -hmm. And it was so good. We, the, 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 the school gave us time to go and campaign. We were given one weekend. So as the voting to happen on, uh, on a Monday, the, the, the principal, Mr. Wenena back then, allowed us to, to, to have a campaign period. And it was so good because you had to go to Form 1. We had to go to the Form 2s and the, the, the Form 3s because the Form 3s with the class which I was, as you can lead when I'm in Form 4. Even the outgoing uh, Form 4, they had to also to select the leaders of the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we were three of us. And I decided to be the game's captain. And luckily I won. In fact, the teachers were surprised how I was voted by the student, like because I won like 80% of the votes. I think it started there. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I joined Mount Kenya University. This is where now I came and I found another platform to show my leadership skills. Mm -hmm. I came and find, uh, 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 when I was in my first year, found a president who was called Washira. They did the campaigns. I was a fresher back then. So I just watched by, uh, by afar. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Then, when I was in my second year, there was, a, there, there was also campaigns and uh, I could see uh, people vying for various dockets. I was mentored by one famous president called Mavo. It was called Mavo Mzito. <laughs> yes, he joined me in his campaign team. Uh -huh. Yes, I was in his um, campaign team. And we really did some very serious campaigns. And luckily he won. Mm -hmm. Yes, he won. And uh, from there, I approached him. I told him now, because I've seen there is a trend in this university where that you just buy once and then you let others uh, lead for another extra one year. I've decided also to, 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 to contest for a seat. And I told him I'm going for the health and accommodation docket. And him being the incumbent president, he really advised me. That's good. So now, from a games captain to health and accommodation, you were you are good back then in high school, in sports. What, why didn't you just decide to again go for, for the games docket? Thank you. That's a very nice question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it was one of the challenges which I faced during my campaigns. Mm -hmm. But also even, uh, I'll tell you, not even a matter of uh, being the games captain in high school and I'm, I'm going for the health and accommodation docket. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge was I'm studying bachelor's education and I'm going for a health docket. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I will find it very difficult for the uh, students who are pursuing medicine at the university and clinical medicine at the health uh, uh, department, convincing them why and I don't have any experience to do with the health issues and I'm going for the health docket. Mm -hmm. But what motivated me, it is the inner self, the George in me, the Lewis in me, which showed me, uh, I got the passion that uh, we resided in the hostels. When I joined university, I was, in the, uh, I was admitted as school hostels. I, can, I could see the challenges the students were going through. The, the, the diet part of it, we had, uh, it was not that wanting. The biggest challenge at our university was the kunguni. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I decided, even if I'm not in the health docket, I'm not, in the, I'm not taking, pursuing health, uh -huh. I saw it important. I think I should go for this, for that seat. For that seat. Mm. And I can bring change. I should see the end of uh, the kunguni is affecting the students. Mm -hmm. No, it was very bad because when you're in class, the kunguni will, uh, you could, will, will see it on your clothes and it was very embarrassing mm -hmm. to the students. Mm -hmm. And mostly it happened to those students who resided inside, inside the university, university. hostels. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Yes. So I, got the, I, I decided uh, I will go for the health and accommodation docket to change and to ensure you have eradicated the that I've eradicated the the bed bugs mm -hmm. and luckily when I say I think I was the minister who did it wow I made it okay I made it now uh, give us in brief uh, the strategies you used putting in mind you in education and your other health um, students who were vying for that position but you from education, what strategies did you put to ensure you became victorious in that, in that seat? Uh, one of the strategies I used, I recruited students who are taking uh, health courses. I had students who are taking animal health, course, dental, mm -hmm. medicine, pharmacy, 
I ensured I had them, mostly when I was visiting the, uh, the health school to talk with the students there. Mm -hmm. So as they would help me convince the students that, yes, I'm not conversant with the health issues, eh? but now with them, when I'm, in the lead, I'm in, when I'm with them, uh, I will have better ideas. I will make it to bring the reforms which were needed. You know, in the health docket, it is very wide. It is not all about, it was called health and accommodation. It, it, uh, the health and accommodation docket, it doesn't just entail about the, 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 the health of the student. It also uh, entailed about the diet, about the cleanliness of the school, what is being provided to the student by the external uh, hostels, mm -hmm. the condition of the hostels, the cleanliness of those hostels, you see? Mm -hmm. we, would ha we had to ensure that even in those with external hostels, that the workers with those ones, they have the satisfaction from the health uh, ministry mm -hmm. that they should serve, the the, 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 they should serve in those hostels. Mm -hmm. So the docket was very wide. We were in charge of the pharmacy. We were in charge of the student cafeteria. Mm -hmm. We were in charge of the, even the, we had to ensure um, uh, whatever is happening in the school, is the best. The drainage, mm. it was also in my docket. Mm. And uh, it was, there was a challenge if you, those who knows about Kenya, the drainage was also an issue at the boys' hostel. Mm. So those were the issues I had to address. So the strategies, the other strategy that I used, uh, I realized that Mount Kenya University had gone the, let me not say, the tribal way. So you would find that uh, the organization, there was the, the, there was the club's organization, so I will go to see you. I talk to the CU, SDA, mm. Integrity Club. Mm. You go and talk to them, those are the strategies. Uh, also, we had the finances. For one to make in these uh, the, 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 the campaigns, mm. one had to have uh, the, the finances. So that was also a strategy, having money. Having money. Having money. It was one of the first strategies. You see? It was one of the strategies. Then the, there was a lineup that if I go for the health and accommodation uh, docket as a Kikuyu, I may say, then for the presidency, then, understood, then the one who goes for presidency, we are in the same we are in the same lineup. Must not be a Kikuyu. Mm. Must come from another tribe, tribe mm. which really worked very well, and we helped each other because we had gone up. We had gone as a as a, we had we, we, we had formed coalitions. coalitions. Yes, we had formed coalitions. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to not only to Mount Kenya University but even other universities. But if you manage, the thumbs up. Thank you. So now let's now go into you as a youth, into leadership. Um, what is the position in your own perspective about youth leadership in this country? Yeah. Uh, my position is uh, in, in youth leadership in this country. Mm. I can say that the current leadership has failed us. The current leadership because it is not prioritizing on the youth's agenda agenda. Mm -hmm. If you look at the current appointments, it has been of the 60 and above. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I can say we need, we need change. Mm -hmm. We need to see more leadership for the youth. We need to see more uh, youths being involved in, lead, in, lead, uh, in, in leadership. Mm. them being appointed into positions. They must not be of political uh, positions, mm -hmm. but also in the parastatal headings, you see? Mm. In, 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 in anything to do with this country, leadership, even, I may tell you, even you go to uh, private sector, let's see youth being put to head the departments. Eh? Mm. So I can say we are not yet there but you're headed there.
Mm, now briefly, I want to know who are these people who have mentored you, the people you look up to, uh, the people who inspires you. Like many, many, many of us look upon somebody, maybe into leadership, into life. Who are these? Uh, first, those people who have uh, mentored me, I will tell you, is my parent, my dad and mom. Mm -hmm. My dad and mom, they've been very supportive. Mm -hmm. They've mentored me. They, would walk to, they have worked with me through that mm -hmm. journey of leadership. Mm -hmm. And we are aiming higher. The other person is the person I've told you, is the Honorable Chief of Moranga County Assembly, Simon Maura Moya. Mm -hmm. He has mentored me. He has worked with me throughout the leadership journey. He has advised me. And I can tell you, point black, he's a good man. And I always look upon him. He has come from a very humble background to where he is. And he is my mentor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As we end up, I want you to look at this camera and tell the people watching you, inspire them, what should they do if they're youths, what do you think? Advise them. Uh, what I will tell you, I will say, as a young man, as the levies I am, we as the youth, we have to come up strongly with ideas to help this country. Let's not look up to the degrees we have. Let's not just rely with the degrees we have here. We've taken at the university. We have other skills which can be of help to us personally and even to the society. So, what I can say is to advise the youth that we let's uh, maximize our, our ability on what we can do. I saw a young man uh, coming up with a machine, uh, which a ventilator during this pandemic. They were the youth from um, uh, Kenyatta University. Kenyatta University. I was so happy. So once given the opportunity to be as a young man, I'm sure we can make it. So what I want to say is, let's use our skills. Let's even now forget about the degrees which we have at the university, but let's work on what we can. Let's forget on importing labor from other countries. Let's use our own skills and knowledge here in this country. Let us not have engineers from other countries, let be engineers of our own country. Let us not have doctors from Cuba, let's be doctors of our own country. And with that, we as the youths and the citizens of this country, we shall have achieved our vision 2030. Thank you so much. Despite having an opportunity to work with Teacher Service Commission as a teacher, Lewis Karuki, a.k.a. Kunguni, has gone against all odds like any other youth to sit and do nothing and invested into business. This is a clear indication that youths are dependent of themselves if they want to. This is a word that goes out there to many youths, that the time has come for us to stop being dependent on job employment and create job to assist other youths get job employment. George Karuki has been an inspiration to us and to many. And as we wind up this week's show, I want to ask the youth to go out in large numbers and find what to do. Thank you so much for being part of us. Thank you so much as you continue subscribing and continue advising us on what to do, for we listen to you. I was your host, Stephen Malala Opanda. Till next time, do not forget to click on the bell and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and God bless you. If you've enjoyed the show, hit the bell and subscribe. Hit the bell below and subscribe for more informative videos.